This is really exciting. I thought for sure I was going to be anxious, but instead I was like, I needed to ask for patience because I like wanted to get up here so bad. Um, okay. First things first, I want to make a few dis. Oh, sh I want to pray first. Okay. <laughs> yeah, God, I just thank you for what you're doing. Um, and I just ask that you would put everything in order and in line and that it would make sense, God. And I just, I thank you for boldness and I ask for more of it, God. And I just ask that you would help me not to stutter or mess up my words and embarrass myself in Jesus' name. Okay. Anyways, um, I do want to say something is that um, I'm going to share a bit about my testimony. Um, first of all, I'm only 17, so I have a lot of my life let to, yet to live. So it's not like my full life story. Um, and second of all, um, I'm going to talk about some things that happened in my childhood. But I want you all to know that I don't regret or wish that any of it would go away. Um, and that I'm very thankful for my mom, Sarah, and my stepdad, Josh. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, OK. Oh, man. So first thing I want to talk about, um, I want you guys to like picture a lake. Um, and when it rains or when you get into a lake, you stir a whole, you stir the lake up. So everything that's settling at the bottom, it comes and it flows to the surface. And it's sometimes it's really mucky and gross. And it's, the water isn't clear. Um, and I wanted to say that, like, I wanted you guys to think about it, like, sometimes the devil will bring things back from your past to make you feel those same things again. And it's the same way as, like, when you stir up a lake, but eventually, like, it all becomes clear again and it all settles down. So I really wanted to say that. <laughs> um, with that, okay. I've had a lot of breakthrough recently. Um, and a lot of things have been put on my mind regarding my childhood and my biological father and things like that. Um, but just like rain on a lake, God has washed me new, even if he stirred up a lot of stuff that's been settling at the bottom. But I'm settled again, and I'm clear. So my parents divorced when I was five years old. And my biological father was an alcoholic. And he was very abusive um, and really like neglected me, I guess. and. From that, I have had this huge fear of men. Um, and I talked a little bit about this one time. But I was so scared of boys. I had like this boy teacher that I never t wanted to talk to. And it just started like last year is when I would finally feel comfortable around father figures, I guess. Um, and I thought that I would never be able to like have a dad. I thought I'd never be able to trust someone and you know have someone to like teach me about things. Um, and the truth is like God gave me so many dads now that I think about it. And if I wanted a father figure to teach me about something, that means that Jacob was a dad to me. And Brad was a dad to me, and Jesse, and I mean, even Noah, and I mean, I got Josh, and it's it's crazy to think about. Like, I've had so many father figures who I've gotten a lot closer to. Um, so, yeah, I would relate a lot of the doings of my natural father to God, um, and I'd blame him. I'd blame my uh, blame God for a lot of stuff that my natural father did. 
so um which isn't good because then I was like I was I was scared of God I was like I don't want to thank you sorry yeah yeah um okay um and I have always closed myself off and I've really pushed people away um, when they've tried to help me. And I thought because um, of my parents' divorce and not having like an actual father figure that like, I mean, with that, I had to grow up and I had to be mature because I was seeing a lot of things that like, you're not supposed to see as a child. Um, and so I was like, I can do this on my own. I can be, I mean, I was five years old and I was like, I can be strong, I can be big, but the truth is like, I'm a child. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and um, my mom was scared a lot. She was really scared for my brother and I that we wouldn't feel that way. And um, I really liked David's message this morning. Um, and I thought too that because of that my mom was so scared that I should be scared too. And I thought that because my dad was so abusive and he hated people that I was gonna hate people too. And um, I blamed my mom a lot too, and I shouldn't have. And I never respected authority, and I haven't respected authority until like two weeks ago. I mean, like I'm learning. And I wanted to be by myself. And um, I spent my whole life wishing that the people around me would change. I would pray and cry thinking like, God, change my dad, change my mom, take this abuse out of my life and that's good. Like it's, it's good to pray for that. Um, but then I realized like I needed to be praying for myself. I needed to be praying for my heart, my understanding, the way that I reacted to them. Um, and the fact that I was letting my childhood define me, the fact that I was letting the abuse and daddy issues define me, and that's not who I want to be. Um, so uh, God sent me into Proverbs when I was um, talk, when I was praying about this message. And in the beginning, I was looking at Proverbs, and I was like, that is a good scripture that I wanted to pray about for my mom or my dad or... Um, but then I would look into it deeper and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's for me. <laughs> like, um, so specifically like Proverbs 10, 17, and I'm not going to like read all of these, but I do have to find them and I like, I'm a mess. I like don't even know. Anyways. Yeah, but nobody else has ever used to like saying. We have two notebooks. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot more stuff than you. Right. Okay. Proverbs 10:17. 10:17, 15:1, 12:1, 15:18, 13:10, and 14:29. I told you I do. Okay, so I'm going to read a few of my favorite ones. Okay, <clears throat> so 1017 in my Bible, I have an IV, I think, um, says, whoever heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. And what that, what I saw from that is the fact that like, I would try to be a leader and minister to 
a lot of other people. Um, and I wanted to have God's words for people who were going through fights with their parents and things. But the truth is like, I couldn't teach and talk about that when I was ignoring correction myself. Um, and, okay, what's the next one, 15 one? <laughs> Um, oh yeah, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And I've had a tough time admitting fault. And I would tell other people where they were wrong. They'd be like, I mean, it'd be something simple as like, wow, you have an attitude. And I'd be like, you have an attitude. <laughs> like, I just, I, I don't know. I. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not gonna read all those, but like you guys can get in to them if you wanna look them up later. Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> I wasn't an actual orphan. However, I was um, a spiritual orphan and I felt lost. I felt like a little sad puppy in the rain. Um, and as an orphan does, you don't want to step on anyone else's toes. You want to just hide behind the shadows and make sure that you're um, saying the right things and doing the right things. And uh, I thought that's how I was gonna be for the rest of my life. I thought I was always gonna be an orphan. Um. But that's not who I am. And that's not who I'm gonna be. And God's changing my heart and I'm learning about forgiveness, and I didn't want to. I wanted to always hate my biological father and always be mad at my mom for, you know, things that she's done and for the divorce. And But you can't live like that. You can't let your past define you, and you can't constantly be hanging on to these things because even though if you're trying to prove someone wrong or you're trying to make yourself higher than them because you know that they've messed up and you don't want to really deal with it, um, you're not actually growing. Um, and then um, I have this friend named Noah and... <laughs> what? Oh. And one time this friend named Noah gave a message at my old youth group. And um, it's funny because this morning, David's message, he was talking about how your words have power. And then this afternoon, I went back to look at my notes from November when Noah gave this message in 2015. And one of the bullet points is, your words have power. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but this friend, he said, like, well, what he taught me was to not claim something. And he was talking about affliction. And this friend was like, like, he was talking about how he would claim the fact that he has allergies and it's just who he is and that he is sick. Um, but for me, I'd claim the fact that I am, that I do have an orphan spirit, that I was abused, I was neglected, I didn't have a father. Um, and then, uh, we have to pray things constantly, um, and you have to talk about it to God over and over again until there's breakthrough. And then my friend Noah has this mom, and she also gave me a word that was very similar to that, um, and she sent me into Song of Songs or Song of Solomon 2, 14 through 17. If you guys want to go there. 
<laughs> um, and in my translation, it says, okay, yeah, it says, my dove in the clefts of the rock, in the hiding places on the mountainside, show me your face, let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, our vineyards that are in bloom. My beloved is mine and I am his. He browses among the lilies until the day breaks and the shadows flee. Turn my beloved and be like a gazelle or like a young stag on the rugged hills. Um, and I needed, or I need to, and you guys will need to too, <laughs> to cast away those foxes over and over again until there's breakthrough. Pray it constantly. Um, and for me, like, again, it's the, just the way that I was feeling. Um, I have notes on three different things, and you would think that I'd put them all together, but I didn't want to ruin anything, like the way that they were. I don't know, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so now we get into more, um, more recent things. And um, as all of you know, I was in public school um, from sixth grade until 11th grade. I'm in 11th grade now. Um, and I don't regret that at all. I'm actually really thankful that I went to public school because I got to learn a lot about other people and I needed that. I needed to see that other people have gone through divorce too, that other people um, have lack of a father. Um, and I got to a point where I wanted to be a part of this world. I, um, my mom was telling me once about how this random kid that I went to elementary school with, his name was Jonah, that his dad was doing these messages in their basement and my mom was really learning about stuff that was happening in the world. Um, and I was like, mom, you're crazy. I was like, yeah, God's real, but like, Sunday's the Lord's day. Like, that's when I wear a dress, and you know. Um, so, actually, I spoke that, and it was a curse, and I spoke it over my family and my mom, and I said that she was crazy and that these things weren't true. Um, but then I went to one of those messages in their basement, and um, there was this cute little cat that kept me company named Jasper. And honestly, I just felt really welcomed. And like that's a huge part of my testimony too, is that like um, I went to an elementary school where like Caitlin sat with my mom almost every lunch and had this relationship with my mom. I um, argued with Jonah over who liked the color purple more. And I mean, like, I have a picture where Luke was at one of my birthday parties when I was like six, like I, a little, but like, it's just, it's so strange to think about that like, that God's put those same people in my life again. And I never thought that it would be, you know, it would be like this. Um, And the thing is, like, we are crazy. I'm crazy in love with Jesus. I am, I, I think it's, you know, my, uh, my mom is so on fire. She's, it's, it's crazy. Like, the things that she's learning about, they're so prophetic that you could call it crazy. Um, and...
but I did, I did believe it. I did believe that we were silly and that we, you know, that this stuff wasn't actually true. And it, um, um, and so I did things just to fit in. I did things that public schools were doing just to fit in, even if I had no desire to. Um, and I didn't really feel anything from it, but I talked the way that they did, and I, um, I just did the things, and I walked the way that they did, and I, the thing is, like, I knew of God, and I knew how great he was, but I still chose to go the other way, and that's, like, that's what's crazy. Um, it goes back to that orphan spirit thing. And I wanted to please everyone. I wanted to please my public school friends. And, um, but really, they, they've just stuck with me through a lot of this. And even if they have different like, walks of like, they, they still support me and like, they still listen to me. But I, I wanted to be just like them. And um, I was raised really liberal at the time. Um, and I'd go, I would just go to these like, these parades and things, and I didn't want, you know, I didn't want God to ruin that. And then I thought that I could be like, I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know why, but I wrote down James four four and Jeremiah two twenty seven. So, do you guys want to go there? <laughs> um, but. I put a lot of my message together from messages of other people um, and then my testimony because that's like kind of what you do, right? But um, it says like, yeah, let's go to James 4. I'm not a professional. I don't even know where all the books in the Bible are. I have to go back to that table of contents. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I can't find it, so I'm like, that's not an actual book. Someone made that up. <laughs> like, I literally, I can't find James right now. Is it real? Um, I want to read it. Okay, okay, yeah. 1356 is what it is in my Bible. <laughs> not going to be the same for you guys, but. Dang, that's back there. <laughs> Okay, okay. We're here, everyone. We made it. <laughs> okay. Okay, hold up, everybody. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so mine says, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity? Ooh, that's a big word. Against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. So that's James 4.4, 4, and it ties in a lot. Like, I was like, I actually read this one time when I was like, okay, I'll go back in my Bible, but this was after I'd sinned a lot. Um, <laughs> and I was like, it's just funny how God does that, right? Like, he sends you to the perfect scripture that you're supposed to read. Um, yeah, he's so cool. Okay, Jeremiah 2.27. Now, is that a real book? <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Ooh, this one's good. Um, they say to wood, and not wood, not these wood, but they say to wood, you are my father, and to stone you gave me birth. They have turned their backs to me and not their faces, yet when they are in trouble, they say, come and save us. And that's how I thought that God worked. I would 
like I'd intentionally do something that I knew was not right. And then I was like, it's okay, I'll repent. It's fine, which is good. But then I'm like, if I already knew that it was wrong, like why would I step foot into that anyways? Um, so then I, I would believe in God, but I'd be so lukewarm that I would do these things that I'd mess up and then I'd sneak away from where my friends were. And maybe it was in the bathroom or something and I'd sit there and I'd be like, okay, God, I'm really sorry. I just wanted to fit in. And then I'd like whisper so they wouldn't hear me. And Don't do that, that's not a way to go. Um, instead, I learned this, that you should be praying before you do something like this and ask God to take away that desire, to take away that worldly desire. Um, and instead pray for those people that you are planning to be with or at the party you're gonna go to or you know, whatever you guys do. You guys don't party. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whoa. Speaking of Holy Spirit. <laughs> um, ooh. <laughs> All right. Um, so then there's this other girl that spoke at my church, and she said, her name's Jessica, and she said, God's a father and wants to love us if we let him. I loved her message that day, and that's when I decided I wanted to speak about this. So thank you, Jessica, and God. <laughs> but uh I needed to hear that right at that time. And uh, it's true. God's a father and he wants to love us if we let him. Um, so as far as now goes, um, I'm homeschooled, everyone knows that, but I'm homeschooled and I've served my time in public school and I've met the people that I needed to meet. Um, and I actually communicate with my biological father, which is crazy to think about, but uh, I text him often um, and I broke like my soul tie to him, which is crazy. Who breaks a soul tie to their like to their dad? I don't know. Um, and so, I can pray for him without like sobbing, um, <laughs> like in a bad way, I guess. Bad way sobbing. Um, <laughs> and uh, I learn something each time that I open my Bible, and I learn more about myself each time that I'm tested with something. Um, and I know that God wants me to continue to share big parts of my testimony. Um, and uh, when you go through like traumatic things, I don't really know anything that you guys have been through, but when you go through traumatic things, um, it's so clear in your head, it's so visible when you think about it. Um, but that's when you need to pray. Because if you don't, then the enemy realizes that you're thinking about that. And he wants to steal that thought away from you. He wants to say that this happened to you so you're, so you're less. And um, then I... Uh, I realized what soaking was, and if you don't know what it is, it's like where you kind of like take a nap in Jesus, and <laughs> you, I don't know, it's really hard to explain, and I don't feel like I'm, I don't know, but I was soaking one day, um, and just, you just sit in his presence, and sometimes, well, most of the times your eyes are closed, and he just shows you a picture or something, and the first time that I ever did this, I was really scared because I didn't want to bring up stuff. I didn't want to think about my past or those traumatic experiences. Um, 
But now, every time that I think about those things, I can clearly and physically see where Jesus was in those times. And that is like the coolest thing. Um, I'm just gonna tell you guys this one thing. And I did, I did share a little bit about this after we went um, treasure hunting, I think, or something. But um, no, it was after prayer. Okay, whatever. But I did tell you guys a little bit about this. Um, <laughs> and but my biological father, I used to see him because usually when your parents get like divorced, there's you have like weekends where you go to your dad's house or weekends where you go to the mom's. Um, so I'd go to my dad's house, and um, this is where first I want to acknowledge my mom again. Um, there was a lot of things that she couldn't control. Um, but if she did know about these things at the time that she did, I would not be able to go back to my dad's house. So just want to let you guys know that she wasn't aware of these things. She is now. Um, so before you think, like, what the heck? Why didn't Sarah, like, not let her go, you know? <laughs> so, um, but I'd go, and he lived in this trailer, but it was my... It was my grandma's house before, and um, he lived on a farm, which was really awesome as a kid, because I was always around horses and turkeys and stuff. But, um, <laughs> however, there were a lot of things that were not good, and he would get drunk, because he was an alcoholic, and um, he'd never directly lash out at me um, but I'd see him like lash out at other people and the people that live there. So my stepmother and stepbrothers, um, they would do some pretty horrible things. And one time, I'm going to say two different stories, but this first one is I was sitting on the living room floor and my stepbrother had this scorpion. <laughs> He had the scorpion, <laughs> and um, I was so scared of it because it's a freaking scorpion. Um, and all of my step siblings sat in a circle, and they made me sit in the middle. And there was a scorpion, and it was like Josie against the scorpion. Um, and I remember being so scared, and they made this wall that they wouldn't let me leave. Um, actually, if I wanted to leave, I had to eat the dog's poop, <laughs> which is really funny if you think about it, but it's also really, really bad if you think about it too. <laughs> and so, sorry. <laughs> they were like, I would try to run in between them and they would get closer together and, um, But looking back at it now, Jesus himself was sitting in the circle too. And he was with me, and it was Jesus, Josie, and the scorpion. Um, and I remember now that I didn't have to eat dog poop, and uh, I didn't get stung by a scorpion. And I realize now that it's because Jesus was sitting with me. And eventually, my step-siblings gave up, and they didn't think that it was fun anymore to pick on me like that. Um, and then another thing I want to quick talk about, another little story. Um, anyways, he had his dining room and his kitchen were connected, and um, there was this big window to the left. Um, and then it was like the kitchen here. And he used to have, um, like, I think he added on like this mudroom. But at first it was just like this window that was there that was like, or like, I don't know, I think I, I'm probably remembering incorrectly, but like, um, that I could see through. Um, but then he added on, there was like little baby chickens I can see, it was so cute. But um, there was a time. <laughs> that I was sitting, and it was a rule that if I didn't finish all of my dinner that I got beat with the belt. 
So, and my dad works in a factory and he's a, it's one of those big leather belts. And so he'd sit there and he'd play with this belt back and forth on the table and it would be really nasty food, not gonna lie. It wasn't just like I was a picky kid that didn't wanna eat her Brussels sprouts. It was like, well, it was, there was a time that I had a cow and I named her Betsy and my dad killed her and then we ate her. So it was like things like that, things where I like, I didn't want to actually eat this food. Um, and so my dad would sit there with my stepmom and they'd be bickering and he'd be playing with his belt and I wasn't safe, I didn't feel safe. And, um, but now it's important that I brought up the window because I could see Jesus in that window and he was looking at me and that specific night I was able to go to bed without finishing all of my food and even though my dad took his belt off and he was playing with it like that, I never actually got hit with it, which was good, but there were many other times that I did. Um, and I guess the last thing I wanna say is, if it weren't, if it weren't for my brother, Stephen, I would definitely not be the person that I am today. And he taught me everything in Sunday school. And he was the one who knew about God and would talk to God. And so he planted a seed in me a long time ago. And then now I realize that God's hand has been on my life for, for forever. And that he's always protected me. Um, but God really gave Stephen strength. And there were nights that I would call out to him. And there were so many nights that I had to sleep in his bed because I was scared. Um, so I have this amazing bond with my brother. And it's because of God. And he's still very much in our relationship today. But... I realize now that God gave me him to have someone to go through that stuff with. And I'm constantly praying for people who are going through abuse and neglect and things like that by themselves, that they would hear God somehow, because I was lucky to have my brother. But um, God does love every single one of you, and he wants to be a dad to every single one of you, even if your natural father is still super amazing. God wants to be 10 times more amazing. And he's been in your lives from the beginning, even if it's hard to think about, even if you have gone through traumatic experiences, you really need to sit down and ask God where he was, and he will show you that he was there the whole time, that he's never left you. And it's so prophetic that you're here today. And you are called to much more. You're not defined by anything of your past. You're not defined by who your family is or what they've said or what they've done to you. You are your own person and God has made you that way. You're perfect. I don't know. That's all I got. <laughs>